Well, what's up, King of Kings online campus? I'm Zach, one of the teaching pastors at King of Kings. Super excited to be with you. We've been really diving into 21 days of prayer, especially the voice of God as we've started 2022. And so if you missed any past messages, you can check them or watch them at the link below. Hey, also, we'd love for you to invite somebody to join you. We're just getting started with worship today and the message. And so invite some friends really quickly to join. And as you're watching, please participate. We love it when when you participate. Let us know who you are, where you're watching from. If you want to participate any time during the message or got a question about anything, we'd love to know and we'd love to help. So catch you up if you've missed the last couple. The first week we explored how God is a speaking God, but the problem is we can't always hear him. We aren't intentionally connecting with him through prayer and we're too connected to this world. So we've been on this journey for 21 days uh, to pray and to fast. And so we're praying to connect to God and we're fasting to disconnect from this world. Last week, then we listened to four powerful whispers God is speaking over our lives. I love you, I forgive you, I choose you, and I'm coming back for you. Isn't it good to hear those things over and over in our lives again? We get so bombarded with lies from the enemy, and yet God remains close to us, just whispering to continually encourage us. Well, today we're closing up the series, and I remember buying our first home in St. Louis and enjoying the air conditioning in the house when all of a sudden the air conditioner stopped working out of nowhere. Being a new homeowner, I had no idea what to do, so I called a local air conditioning company. It was like a minimum charge of $200, but it was in the heat of summer, so we agreed to this. And one minute after he arrived, he assured us the problem was fixed, and he held an utterly black air filter in his hand and said that the air filter had never been changed. Now, when I grew up, I'll be honest, I never even knew there was such a thing called an air filter. Like, nobody ever told me. So, of course, I had no idea they needed to be changed. And I learned from this costly mistake how essential filters are. I found that to be true, not just for air conditioning, but also for the voice of God. So what I want to do for you today is give you a filter for discerning God's voice. I love how the disciple John puts it. Dear friends, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. As a pastor, I can't tell you how many conversations I've gotten in where someone says, God told me dot, dot, dot. But sadly, that statement God told me has often been followed up with something that I know is like, that's not the voice of God. And so how do you know if it's God's voice? How do you know if it's God speaking to you or if it's the enemy speaking to you? Or it might just be like the bean burrito you ate for dinner last night, right? I mean, I want to give you today three questions that I think can help form your voice of God filter. The voice of God, let me tell you, it'll always pass through these three tests. Let me repeat, it will always pass all three of these tests. I want to give credit to the Church of the Highlands where I first learned these questions. Most important question to ask, number one, is this. Does the Bible agree? What this means then is like you need to actually know the Bible, right? A few years ago, research showed that only 19% of Christians read their Bible on a regular basis, which means 81% of us, four out of five of us, don't. It's no wonder we have a hard time recognizing his voice because God's voice is most clearly heard through the Bible. God's will will never contradict his word. God's voice will never contradict his word. If he said it, if it is true, and it will always be true, God will never tell you to violate a principle he's already given you. Does this line up with what God has already said? Because if it contradicts what God has said, then it didn't come from God because his truth is eternal. Luke 21, 33 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Truth never changes. If it was true a thousand years ago, it is true today. If it's true today, it'll be true a thousand years from now. Now, opinions will change. Science will even change, even some facts, but truth will never change. People say, God said it. I believe it, and that settles it. Well, not really. God settles it. God said it. That settles it. And whether you believe it or not, because God cannot lie. I lie, you lie, but God cannot. And so the best way to ensure that your filter remains strong and intact is to have a deep understanding and growing understanding of the Bible because if what you are hearing goes against what you are reading in the word of God, it's not God.
You need to be continually growing in your knowledge of the Word of God. And you need to know what in theology we call the, the whole counsel of God, which means I'm going to bring everything God says together on this, not just, not just picking out one text or proofread texting it. Like people have been using Bible verses wrong from the beginning of time, and they still do it today. In fact, I came up with a verse, and I'm going to take it out of context and show you that you've never been taught this before by God's Word. Did you know that from the Bible, you can prove that vegetarians have weak faith? Did you know that? <laughs> Let me show you. Romans 14, 2 says, One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. There you go. God said it, right? Instead of veggie tales teaching our children, we should have had grown up with like seafood stories or meat memoirs or something. But if that's all you read, you would think that vegetarians have weak faith. They don't. I know some vegetarians that have great faith. I mean, they don't have as good of a life. I mean, come on, kale instead of steak. But still, they can have great faith. It is shocking to me some of the conversations I've had with people that claim to follow Jesus, and yet something they say completely contradicts God's word. So my question to you is, do you know God's word well enough that when you read it, or better yet, when someone else is speaking about it, you can discern if that's God's truth or not? Because you can take it and use it in all sorts of ways. It's what the devil did when he was tempting Jesus in Matthew 4. What did the devil do? He used the Bible to do it. And he would say, well, doesn't the Bible say? It's hilarious, by the way, the devil is using the word to tempt the word of God. And when he quoted those verses, you know what Jesus came back with? Three more statements. It is written every time. Jesus knows his Bible. You need to know your Bible. And let me say this, as a man that preaches from the Bible and tries to bring biblical concepts, like you shouldn't just take what I say. You should test it. I'm sure that once in a while I've been out of line or said something wrong or because I'm a sinner and biased in certain ways. I'm, I've probably gone too far in areas that I shouldn't have. And so don't just trust what I say. Test it according to God's word. That's the greatest filter we have when it comes to discerning God's voice. All right, the second question. Does godly counsel agree? Does godly counsel agree? All of those words are important. Godly counsel, but also agreement. And here's why I say that, because there's a lot of people that believe in the Bible and would call themselves godly, and their views, their lifestyle, or their advice are sometimes so wacky and incongruent with God's word. Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you'll be counted among the wise. Solomon would also say in Proverbs 24, 6, Surely you need guidance to wage war, and victory is won through many advisors. And so I'm not talking about here where you get all this counsel from all different types of people and you never get the advice you want, so you just keep looking somewhere else. It's like the guy, have you heard the story about the guy on his way to work and he said, God, if it's your will for me to stop and get a dozen Krispy Kremes, then the hot light is going to be on. And when he got there, the hot and ready light wasn't on, but he decided, well, let me circle around a second time. And then it was on. And I think some of us do that with God. Like if you don't get agreement, don't keep going, just stop. Ephesians 3 verse 10 says that God's intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. And so that's why church is important as a whole. But also, I think we have to dig deeper, and that's why we preach and teach here at King of Kings about the importance of a small group, that every one of us needs people that are godly, that can speak into your life. Relationships like aren't just every once in a while, and that's why small groups are so important in that. These are people that can speak into your life. They can get to know you. They can bounce ideas off of one another. Part of that godly counsel, if you are married, it should be your spouse. And this is why it's so important who you marry. I am flabbergasted at some of the dating decisions that Christians make. I mean, the Bible very clearly says that we should not marry someone who is unequally yoked, which simply means is nowhere near where you are on a spiritual level. Because if the person you marry, if you don't see eye to eye about God, then let me tell you, you're both going to feel constantly at odds with one another, and you will not understand each other's decisions, and it will eat away at you. And so who is your godly counsel? To obtain godly counsel, like you need to have those people in your life. It's what a spouse is for. It's what the church is for. It's what small groups are for. So does the Bible agree? Does godly counsel agree? And then finally, our third question in our filter. Do I have peace? The Bible says the Spirit of God lives in you. Do you know that? And do you know what language the Spirit speaks in? Peace. Jesus says it's a peace the world cannot give. There's not a bottle or a pill. There's nothing. God has a peace that the world cannot give you. 
1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, For God is not a God of disorder. Other translations say confusion, but of peace. God's voice, even when it's not easy, even when it, it calls for you is against the grain of this world, you'll still have peace. And so this is the third question. Do I have peace or do I have angst about this? When you're trying to discern if this is God, like this is a big question I recently had to ask. Truthfully, before moving back to Omaha this past summer and joining the teaching team here at King of Kings, when it came down to it at the time, I was serving God in ministry in Florida and had had an incredible 11-year chapter there, was really happy. So when this opportunity came, well, does the Bible agree? And honestly, the Bible doesn't have a verse that says, hey, Zach, you should move from Florida to Nebraska or you should stay or you should go. Does godly counsel agree? Well, there were lots of different opinions and advice given to me. And this was one of those cases where either choice could be appropriate. But where it came down to is this question. Do I have peace about this? Or do I have angst? And the more we looked at the situation, even though opportunities had come prior that didn't work, like this time, for whatever reason, I can't explain it, there was just this peace. I felt it. I knew it was right. But here's the deal. If I wasn't in relationship with God, in relationship with my family, and with a few other incredible people that were able to give me godly counsel, then I may not have made that decision. And here's the other thing I know. You, you need to seek God's voice for yourself too. Because if you don't, someone else will tell you, God told me to tell you, <laughs> fill in the blank. Right? If you don't know for yourself, Others will try to project what God's will is for your life. They will try to be God's voice, and sometimes they may be right, so it's always good to test if that's God's voice or not, so you know if it's his or not. But sometimes, even with good intentions, and sometimes with selfish intentions, they can say something that is definitely not from God. And so when God speaks to you, it will give you peace, not angst. So, does the Bible agree? Does godly counsel agree? Do I have peace? If it passes all three, it very well could be from God. If you're still struggling, whether it's the voice of God and trying to discern that correctly, on day seven of our devotion, I also listed these questions that you can see on the screen or we'll put them in the chat as well. And so you can see these questions are really great questions to ask too. Will this make me more like Jesus? Is it consistent with how God made me? Does this concern my responsibility? Is it convicting or condemning? Is it wise? That three-word question saves so much stress. Is it wise? Now, I wanted to tell you all of this so that you can clearly discern the voice of God. The great news is that the more we change and check up on our voice of God filter, the more we can recognize and discern God's voice. Jesus says about himself as the good shepherd in John 10, 4 and 5, he says, When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because what? They know his voice but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. It is possible for you to know the voice of God so well that when a stranger's voice comes, you know where it's coming from and you don't even have to follow it. And that's my prayer for you. It is incredible that God actually wants to speak to us and be in a real relationship with us. And so my takeaway for you, two of them actually. Number one, if you haven't changed your air filter in a while at your house, do that today. These things get dirty. And maybe, I don't know, every time you change your air filter, you can check your voice of God filter and go through those questions. But number two, just like a filter, uh, when we live in this world, we get dirt on us. We need to be cleansed. Sometimes we don't hear the voice of God in our life because our own sin blocks us. Dirt piles up the world gets on us and we need to confess that dirt before our God and we need God's grace to wipe away our sins so we can hear. And the great news, God's already done it. There was a time when all the dirt of all the world was stuck on the body of Jesus, all the filth, the grime, and the nastiness of every bad decision, choice, action, and inaction of you, me, and every single one of us was on him. On the body of Jesus, he hung on the cross. And Jesus died a brutal death in our stead, in our place. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. And it's through that victory over death that we have been cleansed. And the Bible says that now we who were once dirty, filthy, and stained are now robed in white. We've been cleansed. Your dirt is gone. And if you've never received this gift of grace, I want to pray with you as we close. Dear God, 
We confess our sin before you today. Jesus, even when we don't understand it all, we thank you that you love us, that you made us, that you give us purpose, that you forgive us, and you take away our condemnation. And so God, we want to know you. We want to hear your voice. Show me things in our life um, that are keeping us from hearing you and help us to follow you and trust you from this day forward. Amen. Hey, if you said that prayer, will you respond in the chat right now so we can follow up with you? And it has been a blessing to be with you for these 21 days of prayer. We are only on day 15, and so remember to follow along on the daily devotions through social media at the link here. Blessings.
so great. Thank you, worship team and Pastor Zach, for teaching us all about hearing the voice of God through prayer in this series. Hey, I'm Danielle, and if this message helped you today, do me a favor and share it with a friend. Today, we're also wrapping up our chats about the four key values at King of Kings, and I want to tell you about the last one, authentic. We share our lives here at King of Kings. We're honest and transparent about ourselves and our journey. We don't hide or pretend, and our vulnerability is a gift that we give to others and is inspired by the love of Jesus and his humility. If you're going through a tough season, we're here for you. Our team would love to connect with you. We're a community of people who care about you and are ready to help you for whatever you need. Just text the number on the screen or go to kingofkings.tv to connect with us. And one way that we're able to support those in need is by the generous gifts of people like you. If you want to support this ministry, you can text the number on the screen now. Hey, I'm so pumped about next week. We're going to be kicking off a brand new series called The Daniel Dilemma. It's a six-week series and it will teach us how to stand firm and love well in a culture of compromise. That's all I got for you today, but stay tuned. Up next is Hey You Kids and one more worship song. Hey, Mr. B. Hey, um, you feel a little off today. I feel a little wonky. How about you? I feel fine, but I mean, I always feel like you're a little wonky. Uh, yeah, but today's even more than normal, and I don't get it. I mean, I got up, I showered, I brushed my teeth, ate my breakfast, hung with my family, talked with my wife and my kitties, and then I drove them off to school, came here, and I should be feeling on, but I'm off. Did you take the bridge when you went to work, before you went to work? Oh, you think that's it? No, the bridge seemed fine. Right off 680 there, whoo, clear sailing. No, no, no. Did you use the bridge this morning? Oh, you're talking the, the I-80 loop? I did not. That one's slow. I, I never use that one. So, no. No, I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. I'm, so, no, let me show you something. Watch this. This is you this morning. Yeah. You got up, you got ready for work, talked to your kids yeah. and your family, uh -huh. and Here then you go. took off. Up to work. Yeah. That's, what? That's you. Face down, the bridge broke. And struggling, as you can see. I am struggling. That's you see, I Mr. B, you didn't start your day out right. You didn't use the bridge. What bridge are you talking about? I'm talking about this bridge. Oh. You see, God sent his son, Jesus, who died on the cross and created a bridge for us to be able to communicate directly to God. Oh, okay. And so when you start your day using this bridge, right? Okay. Now let's see what happens to little Mr. B. Okay. He gets up, he uses God's bridge, he talks to God before he takes off on his day, and here's what happens. Whoa. Oh, I, I still fell down. I, but you get back up. Well, I fall down a lot. See, it makes a big difference, Mr. B. Wow, I didn't even crash and, and break and... That is a big difference. Oh, I get what you're saying. Can I play this for a little bit? Absolutely, All how right. about it? 
You see, sometimes the bridges that we drive on, they get shut down. Maybe they need work. Maybe there's a traffic jam. Maybe the bridge is not even available. But God created a bridge for us through his son, Jesus, that never, ever shuts down. And because of God's gift of salvation, we get to talk with him. We're reunited with God. We can talk to God whenever. I mean, like maybe you have a tough test coming up and you need to ask God, God, please help me to remember everything I studied. Maybe your stomach isn't feeling very good and you wanna say, Lord, how oh, can you please heal my tummy? Maybe you just won a game and you say, God, thank you for the ability to play and run. We can talk to God whenever. It's not just for breakfast and before bedtime. And God is always there. And God's power never leaves. And God says, talk to me. Talk to me. I'm here. I'm listening. I'm here with you. And because of what Jesus has done, we can talk to God whenever. Here goes little Mr. B. Across the Jesus Bridge. Here he goes. Here he goes. Oh, redirect. Mr. B needs lots of redirection. Here he goes. You made it! Graves into Gardens, take two. I searched the world But it couldn't feel me Man's empty praise And treasures that fail I never knew Then you came along And put me back together Now satisfied
There's no 